Hello. You may remember me from such films as 101 Things to Ask Google Home or Google Home Mini Unboxing, Setup, and Full Tutorial. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you what's new from Google. This is Nest Audio. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So this is the brand new Google Nest Audio voice activated speaker. It comes in sage, sand, sky, chalk, and charcoal. And certain countries only have the chalk and the charcoal, but I decided to get the sky and the charcoal, and this is the sky. Nest Audio is the next generation of the Google Home speaker. So this is the Google Home speaker that I first reviewed almost four years ago. So they have made a few changes. They've changed the name. It's now called Nest Audio and there is a lot more to unpack in here. So some of the big things is it's 75% louder and it has 50% more bass than the original speaker. Now looking here on the side, so it says you can fill the room with crisp vocal and rich bass with new built-in tweeters and woofer. You can ask Google Assistant for anything to play music, news, radio, and more. You can check weather, you can make calls, you can set timers all hands-free. With Group Nest Audio, you are able to pair different speakers and you can also pair two of these together in stereo sound. So I have two that will check that out. And you can also move music from one room to another or throughout your entire home. And you can also control lights, TVs, and thousands of other smart devices. I have a few of those we can try out. And then over here, this is built with Google Assistant. So Google Assistant allows you to play music, turn up volume. What song is this? Play certain playlists, remind you that you have milk. Uh, what's the weather, turn on the lights and more. And then it is compatible with certain partners. So YouTube Music, Spotify, Pandora, Sirius XM. You can do Google Duo voice calls on this. You can check your calendar. You can search navigation with Google Maps and it works with Philips Hue, but a ton of other smart home products. So to get this unboxed, let's just open it up right here. So this is the Sky version and that is pretty heavy. Also inside the box here, we have a let's get started guide and some privacy information. So here we're going to plug it in, open the Google Home app. Um, you do have volume control, so you can do uh, touch the left corner for volume down, middle for play and pause, and the right is for volume up. And then on the back, you do have a privacy switch. So you can turn off the microphones inside by sliding the switch. And here it gives you different categories and commands that you can try out right from the beginning. But there are tons of other commands that you can use. And thank you, Google, for making a recyclable box. And here's a quick comparison between the size of the original Google Home and the new Nest Audio speaker. The original Google Home is way lighter compared to this new Nest Audio. So I'm very excited to hear how it sounds. So here we have the power cord. Let's go ahead, plug it in and get this set up. So here on the front, you do see the light. So that will show you the volume as well as if it's listening to you. So far, that sounds pretty good. Hi, to get started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. All right, so now we're going to head into the Google Home application. So this is available on Android as well as iOS devices. Once you head into the application, you do need to add your Google account. So up here at the top, this is the Google account I want to link this device to. You could tap here and switch accounts if you want. And then the other thing is you wanna make sure that you're on the Wi-Fi network that you want the Nest Audio speaker to be set up on. And here on Android, it gave me a prompt that a device is ready to connect. And then you also have an option right here where it says set up Nest Audio. But if you don't see those, select the plus, select set up device, and select set up new device in your home. So here you can choose your home. I have multiple locations, but I'm going to select the one called home. It found the Nest Audio speaker. So we're going to say, yes, this is the right one and now it is going to connect to it. Now this process is taking this and connecting it directly to the Wi-Fi. So I don't need my phone to operate the device. You do need a dedicated Wi-Fi internet connection for this to work. All right, we heard the sound, so it is connected. And now we have the option to improve Nest Audio by having it automatically send data to Google. So I'm gonna say, yes, I'm in. And then we're going to choose the room that we want to add this to. So I have a few different rooms in my home. If you want to add a new room that you don't see there, you can come down here and select add custom room. But we're in the office right now. I'm just going to select office. 
And then we're going to choose the Wi-Fi network we want it to be added to. And then now it is going through that process to connect to Wi-Fi. And here it's talking about some things you need to know about Nest Audio. So Google works with different partners. And in order to use some of their services, they are going to send audio data to them to use their services. And then when guests use this device, it will be able to interact with them, but they will not have access to your Google account. And then here it says, let friends and family know that their interactions could be stored on your Google account unless they link their own account. Now there's a lot more information to that, but I would say that your information is going to be private with your Nest Audio. Next, we have Voice Match. So in Voice Match allows you to link your voice to the Nest Audio and you can have six people in your home do the same so that it can know the difference between the people living there. So here we're going to select Next and agree to Voice Match. Now, I've already set up my Voice Match settings. If you haven't, here it will ask you to say a few different commands to link your voice. And then here it's asking if we want personal results. So with personal results, it can give us notifications and reminders and other things like that. So I would say you're gonna get the most out of your Nest Audio if you agree to personalized results. Next, we have default music services. Now, some of these do require a subscription, but you also have free radio services available, sometimes with ads. So here we're going to select YouTube Music, RIP Google Play Music, you have Spotify, you have Pandora, or you have Deezer that you could link directly to the Nest Audio. Now we have radio services. So you could link a Sirius XM account. Um, I don't have that, so we're just going to select next. And then you can also link video services. Now you're probably asking why video services? There's no screen on this. Well, with a Nest Audio device, you are able to easily control a Chromecast device on your TV. So you link a service here in the app, and then you can ask the Nest Audio to play videos up on the TV. So you can go through and link any of your accounts. So because I haven't yet, I'm just gonna go ahead and link my Hulu account. And now it has been linked. And then we're going to select next. And now it's talking to us about voice calls. So you can use Google Duo to make voice calls to anyone in the world as long as they have a Google Duo account as well. With Google Duo, you can also use the Nest Audio to call other speakers within your own home. And since I've already set up Google Duo, there it's linked my phone number. And if you want a different phone number, you can select the option there. And now we are all done. Next, it is showing us how to control the Nest Audio. So for volume control, you do need to touch the top front and you have volume down and then you have volume up. And then right here in the middle, you have pause and play. And then over here on the back, we have the mic switch. So if you do want to mute, the mic's off. press the mic. And then here it will show orange LEDs indicating that it is not listening to you. So the speaker is now ready to go, but a few more things in the app. You can control music, you can get answers to question, you can get stuff done. You can also control your Chromecast, so I'm going to select Finish Setup. Now that we have our Nest Audio set up, let me show you how you can activate it and what are the things that it can do. So usually it just sits there looking really nice, but to activate it, there are two commands you need to know. You probably already know these, but let me explain. So you can use your voice to activate it with or now on the video, you probably didn't hear anything because I muted those. Now, the reason I did that is because every time I say that, not only is it activating my devices here in my home, but if you're watching this on your phone or TV and you're sitting next to one of these, it's going to activate that as well. And you're gonna try and listen to me. It's gonna pause the music. It's, it's gonna make a mess. So I always mute that in my videos so it doesn't activate yours at home because even though this knows my voice, Google still responds to anybody that is able to talk to it. So if you don't want people talking to it, you need to press the mute button or you need to unplug it. So now let's just ask it some normal things. What's the weather like tomorrow? Tomorrow in Orem, it'll be partly cloudy with a high of 78 and a low of 51. How many days till Halloween? October 31st, 2020 is in 23 days. There you may have noticed that the Nest Audio and my phone activated at the same time. If you are on the same Wi-Fi network with both devices, the Nest Audio will take priority over your phone. Now, if you have other Nest Audio or Google Home speakers close by or Nest Minis, 
the one that is closest to you should be the one to respond to you. So not only can you ask it whether and when things are, you can ask it how to spell stuff. You can ask it to adjust your lights. You can ask it to um, set a reminder or make a calendar event. And the list goes on and on and on. I've made a video of 101 things you can ask it, but I think I should make an updated one of 101 more things. Now let's talk about the main way you're gonna use this, which is to play music. So there's a few different ways to do that. Once you activate it, then you just need to say what you want to play. You could say a music artist, a name, a song, or a genre. And depending on what music service you linked, then it might play a radio of that or the specific thing that you asked. And then you can also specify what service you want it to play on. So I could say, play Matt Carney from Pandora. Sure, here's a Pandora station called Matt Carney Radio. and there it is playing some music. So I can also say, play my new jams playlist from Google Play Music, since it's still working. Okay, your Google Play Music playlist called New Jams. Here you go. All right, so now that I can have this music on my video, let's go ahead and turn it up. So I can touch right here and adjust the volume. I can pause and play. But usually when you use a speaker, you're not gonna be sitting right next to it like I am. Set the volume to six. Okay. And I would say that's pretty loud and much more bass than the original Google Home. There you can see the size. Set the volume to eight. Pretty great. Now there are two new features to the Nest Audio. One is called Media EQ. So Media EQ will automatically take what you are listening to it and adjust it to have it be the best way that that type of music sounds. So if you're listening to music or you're listening to podcasts or you're listening to radio or whatever it is, it would be able to automatically adjust the sound based on how that works. Now the second one is called Ambient IQ. So as what Ambient IQ does is it will automatically adjust the volume of the device depending on what's going on in the room. So if you're listening to a podcast and the dishwasher's going or something in the background is really loud, it would automatically adjust the volume so that you could hear it better based on the surroundings that are the ambient sounds that are in the surroundings. So that's pretty cool. One other big improvement over the original Google Home and the Google Home Mini is the Nest Mini and the Nest Audio now are able to process the commands locally. So instead of sending the information to Google and waiting for it to come back, it is able to do a lot more of that command processing right on the device itself. So it's able to respond a lot faster to your voice. Now let's go ahead and check out more of the settings. So to adjust settings on the Nest Audio, we're gonna head back into the Google Home app. So I'm going to scroll down and find my speaker in the room office. I have a few devices that I've collected over the years. So here we have our office speaker. So I'm gonna tap on the office speaker. Right here we have a few options. One is we can actually adjust the bass and the treble for this specific speaker. So if we want to increase the bass, we are able to easily do that. Down here, we have the option to adjust the volume. So as I adjust it here, you'll notice that over here, it changes as well. There you go. And then here we have an option to cast audio. And when you select that, it will then just mirror whatever's on your Android phone to this. So if you are watching a YouTube video, you could then have it play over here on the Nest Audio. So let me show you that. I'm gonna select play. I'm going to head into YouTube apps. So this is showing the apps that you currently have installed. Settings under accessibility. And here it is playing the, the audio the through the Nest Audio. Now that will only work if you have an Android device. So I'm going to select stop casting. Now we head back in here. Next we have settings. So here at the top it shows who is linked to your account. So this is anyone linked to your home. Here we have alarms and timers. So if you set an alarm on here, set a 30 second timer. All right, 30 seconds, and we're starting now. And there it set our timer. You can see it here in the app. And then we also have alarms. Set a morning alarm every day at 9 a.m. Okay, your alarm set every day at 9 a.m. And then here we can see that alarm. So you can use Google to cancel those alarms, but you can also come in here and do that. 
Now to end the alarm, just say stop. There's no need to activate it to end alarms. That's one of my favorite new features. So if you're cooking and you set an alarm timer, instead of yelling at it, all you need to say is stop and it will stop the alarm, which is really cool. And then I'm going to delete that timer right there. Now there is a different sound for timers and alarms. This is for timers. Stop. And this is the alarm sound. Stop. And as of right now, there is no way to change those sounds. Next, you have the option to name the speaker. So this is called office speaker. I have other speakers like that. I'm gonna name this Nest Audio. Here we have what home it's included in, what room it's included in. Next, we have groups. So with audio groups, you are able to play music not only on one speaker, but on all the speakers in your home at one time. So in here, it's asking which group do you wanna add it to? So I can add it to my home group or office group. You can have them in multiple groups as well. And then if you don't have a group there, you can also create a new group. So let's just keep it in group and select save. Now the best way to create an audio group is to head back to the home page, select the plus and select create speaker group. Now with the speaker group, it then lets you add any other speaker that is connected on your Wi-Fi network. So in here, we can go ahead and add Nest Audio. Let's add the Nest Hub, the Max. We can add our new Chromecast with Google TV. So that's the Office TV. We can add other smart displays. And here we have the Nest Hub Max. And then you could also add a Chromecast Ultra or a third gen Chromecast, but we'll just keep it to these six devices. Let's name it Office Group, select Save and now it has been created. And to adjust our groups, you can scroll down to near the bottom of the Google Home application, and here you can see your groups. So we can come into Office Group. In the settings, we then have the option to choose different devices, and you can also rename the group right there. So now that we have our group, let's go ahead and play music. Play my New Gems playlist from Google Play Music. Now that we're listening to some music here, I have the option to move this to my group. Move this to office group. All right, I'll play it on office group. All right, so it's now moving that <laughs> to office group. So it's playing on a speaker here, a speaker over there, a speaker there, and it's playing on the TV. All right, so that's pretty awesome. So not only do you have the option to listen to music just on your Nest Audio, but then you can instantly move that to a specific room or move it to all of the speakers in your home. Now there was one of those devices that had a little delay. So if you actually head into the Google Home application and go to that specific device, you can adjust its audio delay. So play some music and then you can adjust so that it is playing properly in sync with the rest of the devices. So let's say we wanna add it to a different speaker. Move music to Nest Hub Max. Sure, I'll play it on Nest Hub Max. All right, so there in the back, we saw that it stopped, but now over here, I have controls where I can continue playing that music. And on the Nest Hub device, you actually have the option to choose exactly what speakers you want, choose the volume of the speakers, and it's really cool. Um, this can also change the speaker volume by voice. So that is groups. Next, you have the Wi-Fi option. So this allows you to change the Wi-Fi if you wanna move it to a different home or something like that. So next we have digital well-being. Digital well-being lets you do two different things. So this allows you to filter uh, different music and take control of when you are able to use Assistant. So here first you have filter. So you can set up music, videos, controlling your Chromecast, and other things through the assistant. And then you will also be able to choose based on each speaker. So in here, first we have filters. So we can say everyone that uses this device, only supervised accounts and guests. So if it's not me, then it will filter. And we can come down here and choose what device. So here it's Nest Audio. And then we could choose that they can only do YouTube Kids. They can only do restricted YouTube or only do TV filtered content. We can allow any video or we can just completely block all videos. Let's choose only allow filtered videos. And then next it's asking about music. So here we have option for allow any music. So anything they ask, it would be played. 
Next, we have only allow non-explicit music. So restricted music from YouTube music, Google Play Music, or Spotify, or here, we don't want any music, we have the option to block all music. So I'm going to allow any music, and then you also have options for calls. So you could allow all calls or block them, allow answers or restrict answers, or allow all actions or only allow family friendly actions. So actions are kind of like applications built into the Nest Audio. So if you don't want your kids finding new actions you may not know about, you can allow only family friendly actions. So we use a lot of those, they're really fun. So if you just wanna to limit to that, that is where you would choose that. Now that we have all of our settings, next it's going to set up downtime. So downtime is the setting that allows you to set a schedule. So maybe you don't want your kids playing this after 8 p.m. or before 8 a.m. You can come in here, set up a filter, and then with downtime, it will block responses, it will block all music and videos, and alarms and timers will still work. So you don't need to worry about it not waking you up. Here you could choose what devices you want. Nest Audio, and then you can choose your days. So you have school nights, weekdays, weekends, or you can customize which days it's going to block in the evening. So here we have at 8 p.m. it turns on. So let's say we don't wanna be woken up at 6 a.m. So we can come in here and choose 8 a.m. and select next. And now we have set up well-being. So it will automatically do that every single day. And so you don't have to worry about it and it's only going to play the filter options that you have selected. Now, if you want to disable that, you're just gonna come in here and then I can just easily turn off filters and I can easily turn off downtime with my device. Next, we have accessibility. So this is a feature uh, that my parents always ask me how to enable whenever we set up a new speaker. So whenever I activate Google Assistant, it doesn't make any sound. It just shows the lights, but sometimes you may not be able to see the lights and you don't wanna keep repeating yourself when it didn't hear you. So with play start sound, Whenever I now activate the Google Assistant, you'll hear a sound at the beginning indicating that it heard you. And then you have end sound. So with end sound, it's gonna play that sound at the beginning and when it's done listening. What's your favorite color? And there you heard the sound. So most people like start sound, but I'm going to turn those off. And then we have an option for preview program. So this is just to get the most recent updates, sometimes a little bit early than the public release. Here we have night mode. Night mode is really nice because it allows you to adjust the volume automatically every night. So here you can have night mode activated at a certain day and a certain time. So this is a bit different than downtime. Downtime completely turns it off. Night mode lets you still use it, but lets you add some parameters. So here we have do not disturb. So when do not disturb is on, if somebody does a duo call, you won't be able to hear that. So this is great for the baby's room or a kid's room, maybe nap time. Um, if you have a Google Duo call coming in, you don't want it to wake them up. Or if you have a Nest Hello smart doorbell like I do, when somebody rings the doorbell, it would normally alert you, but when Do Not Disturb is on, it won't make any noise. And then here we can adjust the brightness of the LEDs at night. So you can kind of see that they're adjusting right here. So if it's too bright, you can turn it down or you can turn it up. And then we also have maximum volume at night. So sometimes at night, you'll go to play some music, you just want it quiet music, and it ends up playing at full blast. So this allows you to control that a little bit more where you can turn it down. Next, you have lower volume when listening. So is what this does is if you are watching something on your Chromecast on the TV, you activate the Google Assistant over here, it will kind of turn down the volume on the Chromecast so that this can hear you better instead of listening to the TV. And then here you have an option for let others control your cast music. So in your home, when you play something on the Nest Audio, it will automatically show up in your home that something is playing. If you don't want others to see that, you could come in here and turn this off so they don't receive a pop-up that there's currently music playing. I like to leave it on in case I play the music and then my wife wants to pause it, um, she is able to do that. Next, you have the option to pair Bluetooth devices. Now you can do this in two ways. So you can pair your phone to this and use this as a Bluetooth speaker, or you can actually pair this to another speaker that may be bigger that has better sound. Now the reason you might wanna pair this as a Bluetooth speaker is maybe something you wanna to listen to isn't supported. So let's say you want to listen to Apple Music or you wanna to listen to Audible, you aren't able to do that unless you play it over Bluetooth. So when I tap on paired Bluetooth devices, 
I have the option to enable pairing mode, or I can also just do it by voice. Turn on Bluetooth. Okay, to connect, open Bluetooth settings and look for the device. Then on your device, you would just want to head into the Bluetooth settings. And looking through here, it will show the name of your device. So I called mine Nest Audio. All right, so now it is showing Nest Audio. So I just need to tap on there. Here it's asking for a pairing request. And now we are paired. So now anything that I play on my phone is going to play over here. So let's go ahead and head into Audible. And so here when we play our audiobook, Every version of the tale, however, now the speaker is the going to come place. from over here. And now we do have some controls. Break on a Pause. And there it does have control of some of the things on your phone. So you can increase volume, you can pause, you can stop, you can do a lot of those things. You just can't ask it to play a different audiobook. You would need to go back on your phone to do that. So this Bluetooth option is great for any type of music or application that isn't able to be played over the Nest Audio speaker. Then once you are done using the Nest Audio as a Bluetooth speaker, you can disconnect. Disconnect Bluetooth. Okay, Bluetooth is disconnected. And then the next time you want to reconnect it, connect to Note 20. All right, looking for paired devices. Bluetooth is connected to. Okay, so you could also say the name of your device and it was able to find it that way. Turn off Bluetooth. Got it, Bluetooth is disconnected. Now the second way to use Bluetooth is if you have a speaker that's bigger than this and you want to play music on it. So the Nest Audio actually has really good sound enough to fill a pretty large room, but let's say you have something like this. Okay, it's really small, but if you had a really big speaker, this would be helpful. So we're just gonna turn on the second speaker. We're going to put it in Bluetooth pairing mode. And then in the Nest Audio settings here, you're not gonna go to Bluetooth devices. You're actually going to go to the default music speaker. So when we tap on this, we then have an option to pair Bluetooth speaker. So now it's going to scan for the other Bluetooth device that we have in pairing mode right here. And here our speaker is showing up, so we're just going to tap on that. Now this other speaker, you don't need to have it paired to your phone. It will pair directly to the Nest Audio. So there it has been set as default, select done. And now whenever we play music, right now because they're paired, it's going to play out of here. Play some music. Sure, music on YouTube music. Here you go. Okay, so the music is playing out of this device, but I still have controls over here. And whenever you use Google Assistant, it will play out of here. Just the audio or just the music will play out of the paired Bluetooth speaker. And then to disconnect, disconnect Bluetooth. All right, Bluetooth is disconnected. So now that it's disconnected, it will then play music back on the Nest Audio speaker. Next we have default speaker. So maybe you have another speaker nearby or whenever you play music, you want it to play on multiple devices, you can come in here and choose that speaker. So we just set it to the Bluetooth speaker. You could have the Nest Audio be the default speaker, or you could come down here and find a group. So I have a bunch of home groups, but let's say I wanted it to play on Office Group as my default speaker. So now whenever I ask it to play music, instead of just playing on this, it's gonna play on every speaker at the same time. Next, you have a default TV. So if you have multiple Chromecasts in your home, you can choose which one you want it to always play the videos. So down here I have Office TV. So that's the new Chromecast with Google TV behind me. And now I have set that as my default TV. So what that means is whenever I use my Nest Audio to cast videos to the TV, I don't need to say the name of the TV. So if I say, play tech with Brett from YouTube. All right, playing tech with Brett from YouTube on Office TV. So instead of me saying Office TV, it's automatically going to go up there. So that just makes it a little easier um, to have them working together. Stop. Next we have do not disturb. So do not disturb mutes reminders, broadcast messages, and other spoken notifications. And then here we have that equalizer that we saw earlier on. Now we just have a few more settings here in the application I wanna talk about. Here we have the recognition and personalization. So at the beginning, we already turned this on, but if it's not working properly, make sure you come in here 
and turn this on. Next we have HG sensitivity. So this is how sensitive the microphones are on the speaker to picking you up. So maybe you have two rooms that are pretty close together. With this option, you are able to set one of the speaker to not hear you as much. So here with my Nest Audio, I have the option to make it least sensitive. So if I have another speaker close to this, this would make it so this one doesn't respond. But if I want this one to respond more, I can change this to most sensitive. So it's gonna be the one to most likely respond. And then if I want to go into my home and adjust other devices that I have, um, here you can see I've adjusted this one that I don't want to respond, and you can make it so it's going to work a lot better if you have a speaker in multiple rooms. Here you have the option for notifications. So if I set a reminder, it would not notify me on here if I turn this off, but you'll still receive alarms and other important updates. Hey Google. Remind me to subscribe to Tech with Brett in 15 minutes. Okay, I'll remind you at 7.42 a.m. There is a reminder for Brett. Now when you see a light on your Nest Audio, that indicates that you do have a reminder and that will stay on for 10 minutes. All you need to do is say, what's up? Just wanted to let you know that you have one reminder. A reminder called, subscribe to Tech with Brett for today at 7.42 a.m. I appreciate you telling everyone to do that. And that is how reminders work. Here we have YouTube settings. So because I've now linked this to my TV, maybe I want YouTube to play restricted mode. I can turn that on. Or if I want to turn on YouTube TV content filters, I can turn that on as well. Next we have Google Duo calling. So I've already linked my account to this. If you haven't, you can link it right there. But there are two different ways to call. So one, I could call other speakers within my own home, or two, I could call anybody that I have called from Google Duo. Before you are able to call other speakers within your home, you need to make sure that you have enabled Google Duo on those devices as well. To do that, we can select our profile, we can select assistant settings, and under services, we have voice and video calls, and then we have video and voice apps. So down here, it's going to show us what devices we are allowing to make calls. So here I have kitchen display. Let's turn that on and let's try our call. Call kitchen display. Making an audio call to kitchen display on Duo. So on the other end. What? Hey, how are you? Hi. What are you guys doing today? Um, well, I finished all my homework. You did? Yeah. And guess what? I met two new friends. <gasps> I mean, three new friends today. That's awesome. That's I kind of three be number two of them, but I actually be number one of them. Really? Moana. Wait, Dad, remember, yeah. bring the recipe book that so we can make pumpkin cake at our house. I will definitely bring the recipe. That's a great um, idea. Love you. Okay. Bye. Love you too. Bye. So then to end, I can tap here or I can just say hey, Google. end call. And there you heard the call end. So that was devices within my own home. But now if you have other contacts linked within Google Duo, you can call them as well. Hey, Google. Call Brian from Automate Your Life. Making an audio call to Brian Automate Your Life on Duo. He doesn't know I'm calling. Hey, Brian. Hello. Hey, Brian. Brett here from Tech with Brett. How are you? Good, sir. How are you? Good. I just wanted to call and get your input on the Nest Audio. What is your favorite thing about it so far? Oh, my gosh. The sound quality. It's incredible. It sounds like, like you are. Don't you think so? It sounds like you're in my room. Just so you know, I'm making a video about it right now and you're on it. Um, <laughs> but this is so clear. It is, it is so clear and it's really well suited for a lot of different spaces. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm impressed how loud it can get to fill a room. It sounds it, like I cannot believe how clear this call is. Just so you yeah, guys know. So I haven't actually tried that. Like I, I haven't tried that, I gotta try yeah, that. And I guess you're on your phone, but Brian, he's in Canada and it sounds like he's in this room. 
<laughs> don't don't tell them I'm I'm behind the bed. Oh, what? <laughs> well, and you know what? You don't sound like you're far away oh, from uh, the speaker. I mean, I'm like two feet. I guess how, if I talk but, back here, can you still hear me? Yeah, perfectly. It's a pretty quiet perfectly. room. No kids it, around, so this is the best it's ever going to yeah. sound. Okay, well, I really appreciate you taking the time to test this out. Anytime, sir. Okay. Lots of fun. Make sure you guys go follow Good. Brian from Automate Your Life. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks, Brett. Okay, have a good one. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. So there you go. Google Duo calls sound absolutely amazing with this. We'll have to do some more testing where he's on different speakers or something like that, but the call quality was super, super clear. Now, the last couple settings in here is the option to adjust the group delay. So when you are doing group audio and maybe this one isn't sounding the same as the others, you can come in here and slightly adjust that by the milliseconds. So I can tell that the TV behind me has a delay. So I'm going to adjust this until I no longer hear that audio delay. All right, it looks like that fixed it. Now let's head back. It's nice to play music while you're doing that to make sure it's lining up correctly. Here you can adjust privacy, remove voice match, and remove the device. Now for the last setting that you can adjust here in the Google Home application is speaker pairs. But for this, you do need to have a second Nest audio device. So if you have other Google speakers, they won't work with a Nest audio. You need two Nest minis or you need two Nest audios or two Google Home Macs for this pairing to work. So as how pairing works is we're going to combine them together. So whenever we ask it to play music, it's always going to play out of these with a right and a left channel. So I have previously set up this charcoal Nest audio on my home, just like I did the Sky one. And now all I need to do is select speaker pair. And so here we're going to pair two speakers to create wider soundstage for your music. Here it says place both speakers in the same room. And it's also recommended to keep them at the same height. So now it's showing the Nest audio is going to be paired with the office speaker. So here it says pick the blinking speaker. So we're going to choose this as the right speaker. And now you can choose what the name is going to be. So we're gonna name this office pair. So what it does is it takes both of the speakers, <laughs> it's pretty cool, and it moves them into one new device called Office Pair. Select done. So here we can see Office Pair, and then we have an option to add it to a room. So let's go and add it into our office. So here we have our Office Pair. Up at the top, it gives us the option to adjust bass, treble, and now we have a balance. So if you want it to be a little heavier on the left or the right, you can do that. And now if we go back to our office, here you see the office pair. And in the settings, just like we saw before, it has all of those settings. Now, if you ever want to unpair this, you just need to come back in here, select speaker pair, and then you have the option to separate speaker. Now that we have our pair, let me show you how a speaker pair works. So when you adjust the volume on one of the devices, you can see that it automatically changes it on both of the devices at the same time. So you can pause and play, it will do it on both at once. Play my New Jams playlist from Google Play Music. Sure, playing your Google Play Music playlist called New Jams. So it's playing out of both of them. Next song. That gets very, very loud, especially in this pretty small room. But if you had this in a main living space across the room from each other, I think it would be the perfect combination of devices. And so whenever you activate the Google Assistant, it will come through the left speaker. So if you want it to be closer to one part of your room, make sure you put the left speaker there. Um, but yeah, there you go. That is stereo audio. It sounds really awesome.
Next, I wanna show you that if you're ever playing something on any of your speakers in the home, if you head back into the home app, so in here I have the controls to pause, I can play, I can skip a song, I can adjust the volume. I can't even turn it up full blast. And then here you can adjust where it is in a song. Now, if you do head back to the main page of the Google Home application, right here under media, you can see what is currently being played on the network. So right here, we have our music. I have those same controls, volume, um, skip, pause, play. And then here you have the option to move the music just like I did by voice earlier. So earlier I said, move this to my office group, but I can just come in here, tap office group. And now it is playing on every speaker in the room. Here you can see all the devices it's playing on. Wow. That's really loud. So you do have an option to control the volume on each individual speaker or pair in the group. And you can also adjust the entire speaker group volume at once. So they will move with their each individual volume. So being able to create a group and create a pair is really an awesome thing that you can do. Now, if you only have one speaker, it's gonna do a great job if you only have one Nest audio, but if you wanna enhance the sound, you can get a few more speakers. Even you could add a few Nest minis in your home that would really increase the sound. And then when we're done here, we could just simply close it and it will close that on all the devices. Now next, let me show you a way in which you can play music without voice, and that is from casting from a cast-enabled application. So here, if we go into our audio groups folder, we have all of these different applications that support casting, except for the Audible, which I showed you. But let's say I want to cast something from YouTube Music. So I come into YouTube Music, I'm gonna tap this cast icon right here at the top, and then here it's showing all the different devices. Now that we have our office pair, I can tap there. You heard a sound here showing that that's what it connected to. And then here under playlists, I have my new jams playlist and I can start playing. So now it's playing out of here, just like casting by voice, but I have controls here on my phone, right on the application. So that will work with any audio cast supported app. Now the other way in which you can use these to play different things is to control other devices like your Chromecast. So I already showed you how to set it default, but let's say you wanted to play your music over on the TV. All I need to do is say, play some music on Office TV. Oh, I'm supposed to be talking to this one. All right, music from YouTube, playing on Office TV. So I can send music over there. There it even turned on my TV if it's off and it will play music. And I love that I have control of the rest of my devices. So if something's playing in the kids room, I can ask Google to stop playing kids room or whatever you have the speaker named. So if I want to stop the TV, I just need to say stop office TV. And it will do that. And then you can control pretty much anything else that you have in your home. Turn off office TV. Okay, turning off this TV off. So there it turned it off. I can also ask it to turn off my lights. Turn off the office lights. And all the lights in the house are now off. Turn on the lights. Now, when you set up your Google Assistant compatible smart devices, like light bulbs, make sure you place them in the same room that you have your Nest audio speaker. So here you can see in the office, I have 10 different lights and I have my speakers in here. So any speaker I activate in this room and I tell it to turn the lights on, it's only going to turn on the lights in that specific room. If I say turn off the lights in the bedroom, it would then turn off the lights in the bedroom or I can control each light by voice. Now we already talked about how you can do calls to communicate, but there is another way in which you can communicate within your own home, and that's through something called broadcast. So broadcast allows you to send a little voice message to the rest of your home. So you can do things like 
broadcast dinner time and then it will broadcast that to the rest of the home. Or you can just say a specific message and it will broadcast that to the other speakers in your home. But now you also have the option to broadcast to a specific room. So let's try broadcasting right to the kids and see if they broadcast back. Broadcast to kitchen display. I'll be home in 20 minutes. All right, broadcasting to Nest Hub Max. I'll be home in 20 minutes. And they can reply back. Sorry, it doesn't look like your kids want to talk to you. So broadcast is a pretty fun way in which you can interact with other devices if you don't want to have Google Duo enabled. You are also able to adjust the assistant voice. Hey Google, change your voice. Here's an example of one of my other voices. Would you like me to use this one? No. Here is another voice example. Would you like me to use this one? No. Okay, if you want to hear more voice options, you can find them in Google Assistant settings on your phone. Now there are millions of other commands that you could use with your new Nest audio speaker. It's gonna be impossible for me to share all of them with you, but if you head to the Google Home application and tap the little microphone at the bottom, and then choose the little compass, this will take you to what is called Explore. So Explore will help you find all kinds of things that you can ask Google Assistant, whether you use your phone or you use a Nest display. A lot of it is right in here. So let's say I want help washing my hands. So if I tap on here. Wash, wash your hands for 40 seconds, please. Soap will chase the germs away so you don't cough and sneeze. Now, if you tap what it says right here, that's gonna do it on your phone. So maybe you wanna, don't wanna do that. But if you tap the picture here, it opens it up and it tells you a little bit more. So if you activate Google Assistant and say, help me wash my hands, it's then going to play a little song and help you wash your hands. So let's go ahead and say, I want to control my Nest device. So if I type Nest here, you can see Nest and you get some options. So. Here, it's not gonna be very useful to show you what's on your camera, but you could turn off certain cameras or you could turn off the hallway thermostat or change the temperature there. So you can really go through and find a ton of different activities to do on the Google Assistant that you really wouldn't find if you didn't come here into the list. Now I have made a few videos on how to do a lot of things with Google Assistant, so I am going to leave them at the end of this video. So you can come here anytime you want to find a little bit more. So Christmas time, there's a lot of different activities. I just did one on what should I wear for Halloween and it ran me through different costumes and some really fun things for kids. So there are really just a ton of different things that you can do with Google Assistant. And since I started using Google Assistant four years ago, it's really amazing how much these speakers can now do. It's impossible for me to remember or even show them all off. After using the Nest Audio now for more than a day, I'm really excited about this device. I love all the features it has. I love the speed improvements and the full sound that it brings. Now, one thing I noticed about the Nest Audio compared to the other Nest hubs that I've been using the displays is with those, my kids are kind of distracted by the display and the ability to watch videos and stuff like that. Of course, I can turn that off, but they do a lot of that with those. Where with this, bringing it home last night, putting it here on the counter, we instantly started listening to music. We had a dance party. It was a lot of fun. It brought me back to when first getting the original Google Home and what its purpose was for was just to help me and to uh, play music and have a good time where with the Nest Hub, sometimes they're a little slow. You sit there and stare at the display waiting for it to process the command. But with the Nest Audio, there isn't any of that. You ask it what you want it to do, it does it, and then you can move on. You ask it to play music, it does it, it sounds great, and you have a really good time and there's no distractions. It just sits over here and can play music and respond to your request. So it's actually got me really excited about using a speaker here in the home again and just simplifying things instead of having uh, the bigger display. And I would say that the sound is better out of this as well. So I'm gonna keep playing with it and finding out more things that it can do and making sure that I let you guys know all about the new features that are available with Google Assistant and many of the other fun things to do. So if you have any further questions about the Nest Audio, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to see more things that you can ask Google Assistant, I'll leave a link to a video over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you 
on the next one.